today's topic is going to be cheat. Oh, great topic. Meals. <laughs> yeah, great topic for you at the moment. So we're going to be talking all things cheat meals today um, and give you sort of our view on it, our way of thinking of it and our way to go about it, basically. We give you our two cents, basically. Yeah. So a cheat meal is essentially a meal that is completely off track, has no limits in terms of calories and is probably usually a takeaway or something like that yeah um that people have and i think the word cheat has come about because do you know why i think it's come about why? because i feel like a little while ago people in fitness should only be eating healthy that was like yeah, the yeah, yeah. stigma like you go to the gym you should Rock be eating rice. healthy yeah. you're a pt you should be eating healthy you do crossfit you should be like and I feel like now we've come to a point where we know that's not the case. Like yeah. We know people that are into fitness also enjoy the foods that they want to eat and stuff like that. So I think that's where it come from because it was looked at as you are cheating on your diet that you should be on all the time, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. I'd say that that probably makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But it's not really a cheat, is it now? Now now there's more kind of science back stuff behind it. It's not, yeah, you know, it's not really I mean, a cheat. Unless you are, like we say all the time, a bodybuilder or prepping for a show or something like that, mm. then you are, te if you do have a takeaway, you are technically cheating on your diet because you actually shouldn't be having that because you, yeah. ha you are prepping for something. Yeah. But if you're just trying to lose weight, trying to lose body fat, trying to build muscle just on your own fitness journey, you are not cheating on your diet by having a takeaway or going out for dinner. If you put the, th the correct things in place. But it's bad for um, people's like psychological That's what I mean. things it's towards food. It gives you a bad relationship, really. Yeah, it's a really negative way of looking at a dinner out I or a takeaway, which should actually be really enjoyable. Yeah, I think there's different people. So I think, like, like you said, you've got to categorise people. So if you're every average Joe, like a lifestyle client, mm -hmm. it's actually a, a bad thing to do because it's going to create bad stuff. But for someone who is kind of on a bodybuilding circuit, should we call it? So you're mm -hmm. always competing for... I don't really know if they have... They do have like a what you would call a cheat meal, I guess, after they do a show. They're probably mm -hmm. a little burger. It's not going to be trapped. It's not in their meal plan. It's enjoy yourself. It's more of a psychological thing. Yeah. Um, But they would most likely have like refeed meals, wouldn't they? They would have like a big refeed meal just to kind of restore all the glycogen and stuff in your in your body and salts and whatever. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's a funny one, but we don't like it to be called a cheat meal, do we? No, like you said, it sort of creates a negative impact around your way of looking at going for dinner and stuff like that. And that is not what we want to encourage our clients to think. Mm -hmm. We don't want them to say, oh, I've been invited out for dinner on Saturday. Like, what do I do? I don't want to go over my calories. Like, I can't go over my calories. I can't have this, I can't have that. That is not a sustainable way of living. Um, so we came up with a bit of a different word for it, didn't we? Yeah, I'm trying to think. What it we was came like. up with a hybrid yeah, day. Yeah, hybrid day, yeah. So hybrid day being that you track you track your breakfast, you track your lunch, you have something for those meals that is in your plan or within your calories or something mm. that you would usually have, and then you go out for dinner and you have a pizza or you yeah. go home and you have a Chinese takeaway or whatever. So it's a bit of both. You're still tracking, you're still being good. Um, and then in the evening, maybe you're having a nicer meal. And yeah. we don't want to also sit here and say, you're having something good, like I just said, like mm. good food and bad food. Because again, there is Food's no food. good food or bad food. That is just some foods are going to be nutritionally better for you than others. So... You know, if I home cooked spaghetti bolognese, mm -hmm. that's going to be better than getting a kebab. Yeah. yeah Do you know what I course. mean? Kebabs are gross. Yeah. Gets you don't know what's disgusting. been put in it. You don't know how it's good been cooked. <laughs> you don't know food. what oil's been in it. <laughs> uh, oh, the thought everything of a like that. Is actually, do you know what? It's, it's so weird that like if I think if someone put a kebab there now, it make me feel sick. Yeah. Like they're so gross, like that meat. Yeah. But if I had about six pints, mate, you put some chili sauce it. on that kebab. Yeah. <laughs> Can I get a lamb donut and chips, please, mate? <laughs> oh no. Uh, gross, isn't it? I um I used to have them and then. I had a really bad experience of one, so I've never had one since. Yeah. Like, I've had a chicken sheesh, but I haven't had a lamb on or a chicken. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, you said there's no good foods and bad foods. There is, there is <laughs> some bad foods. It's quite bad. <laughs> you don't know what no, they're doing you, to you. you. You don't want to look at a meal out as a bad oh, meal. Oh, meal out. Do you know what I mean? It's meant it's to be bad. you going out with friends, going out with partners. It's meant to be an enjoyable experience. It's not meant to be looked at as bad. Yeah. So, yeah, mm. hybrid day. So, but what we would also do and tell our clients, which we've probably said on this podcast over a million times, is we would get our clients to kind of bank some calories. Mm. So, Reduce your calories slightly each day, Monday through to Friday, or lead up to whenever you go out. And then you've tracked the first half of your day. You now know how many calories you've got left for the evening, whether that be five, six, seven, a thousand. Um, and then you've got the banked leftover from things. So although you may not track that meal in the evening, or you might not even know the fucking calories, but you know you've got kind of around 1,500 calories. So damage control, you don't need to count every single calorie. No. Um, as long as like, it's just that one meal and you're going on to the next. And there's other ways of looking at it as well. Like if you're actually on a journey, you, you don't want to be doing these cheat meals all the time because you're no. on a journey for a, for a reason. You mm -hmm. want to lose that body fat. So if you want to do it optimal, then just stick to the program. But you can put some of these in there now and then because it's going to help with a more sustainable, sustainable approach so you know you can keep them results. And mm -hmm. it's certainly something we teach our clients going through the process, like more of a lifetime development sort of thing where we can, they know they've got the results, they're in a good place and they can actually go out with their friends, be social and not kind of ruin everything they've done. Yeah, yeah. Because it is really hard to ruin what you've done and put on loads of body fat. Like mm. people don't understand how hard it is to actually do that. Yeah. Like you have to be really lazy and eat loads of shit. Yeah. Like that's just the, f the facts of it. People don't like to hear that, but the reality is you need to eat a fair few calories in a surplus to put on body fat. body fat and to do that you've got to be either extremely lazy and don't move and then if you if it's not the fact that you're lazy you're desk tired you're very lazy when it comes to your nutrition and just eating loads of shit yeah it's it's one or the other and um obviously people do have bad relationships with food and stuff like that but yeah cheat meal should be well not cheat meals and we shouldn't call it cheat meal because it's not it's not cheat is it it's just the hybrid meal yeah but i think people worry so much uh, so much about the meal itself and they actually need to think about the before and after of it. Yeah. So like Mike said, if you know you're going out for dinner at the weekend, you can obviously prepare in advance for that in the week. But I feel like also people will go out for dinner, have a high calorie meal. And then the next day they'll think, well, I ate that many calories yesterday. I might as well do the same yeah. and might as well start fresh tomorrow. Mm. And then the next day they say, oh, do you know what? I've fallen off now. I might as well just fuck it off. So it's definitely about the preparing for it, the actually having the meal, but also knowing, okay, I can go back to, I can go back on track now just because yeah. I had a bad meal. doesn't mean that's throwing me off and I need to, I need to give up. So don't stress too much about the meal. I think it's more the before and after that are going to save you yeah. from sort of falling off track. I, do, I just want to backtrack a bit uh, about what I, what I was just saying, actually. Um, obviously, I was saying you, you've got to be lazy and it's really hard to put on body fat. But I do actually, there, there is, it's, well, if, if you know what you're doing, it's like that. But I actually do feel, and I should have said this, actually, a lot of it is education and understanding of food, isn't it? Mm. Um, I think that's a massive thing because what people do also... They see a lot of shit online. You should do this, you should do this, you should do this, which doesn't help them. And also it's just the understanding of, oh, this is healthy, that's good. I can eat that. Mm. They don't won't look at the calories or the contents of it just because it's deemed healthy. Mm. I'll eat that and I can eat as much of that as I want. It's all like the the, the different companies that do the sins and the it's a it's a free it's a free. You can have as much of that as you want. Mm. But the reality of it, if it is, that's not true. Yeah. You can't have as I mean, unless it's bloody celery. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like as you much can't as that. you can't have as much as that as you want because mm. ninety nine percent of things have a calorie content mm. and, and you have a limit of how much you can have in a day before you put on body fat. So if you breach that limit, you're going to put on body fat. Yeah. So it's not the type of food necessarily. It's no. the amount of calories you are consuming but yeah it's just yeah education is such a huge thing it's certainly mm. something people should be taught from a young age is is it would probably put us out of business but just <laughs> should be taught just calories and macros because yeah. that's the key to everything mm -hmm. like yes you, you need to an element of not being lazy whatever but if you can control your calories and your macros and you know what you need to eat and you 
are you can track that you're you're okay mm -hmm. do you know what i mean yeah but no one knows that mm. um until they come to us because i did have someone come <laughs> i did have someone message me and she did say that she's been on 900 calories a day for x amount and she's putting on weight every week but the, well, i look at that and go but you're not on 900 calories mm -hmm. you probably think you are mm -hmm. or you're loosely tracking but you're not because no one has 900 calories and puts on body fat. It's yeah. just, I mean, I don't even think that's possible even if you're bed bound. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And the way I like to say it to people is uh, that would say to me, oh, I'm not eating that much. I'm eating 500 calories and I'm putting on weight. I don't know what it is, starvation mode or whatever rubbish people use these days. If you were stranded on an island or on a shipwreck, you ain't putting on weight, mate. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> what Have did you, you ever say the other day? You, you're not going to come back fatter yeah, than you were. Do you know what I mean? That's, and that's the, the harsh reality is, and this is where it comes to understanding education, is you're, you, people that go to war or go to a, on a shipwreck or stranded on an island, mate, if you ever see pictures, they are skinny as fuck mm. because they haven't eaten. Mm. Shock. Do you know what I mean? They're also dehydrated as they're well. Dehydrated. They're not holding they any water. They're, they haven't eaten, but you can tell they've lost a shit ton of body fat mm. because they haven't eaten. So, yeah, I think just knowledge is a huge point and people just need to understand calories better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's also huge benefits to having a takeaway or having a going out for dinner, um, especially if you are dieting. Um, because it's a diet break. It's a little break from tracking. It's a break from thinking about what you're eating, which can actually be really healthy for your process because yeah. we all know, and anyone that has dieted, it can become quite consuming sometimes just not being able to just eat something, like having to think, is it within my calories? Am I yeah. tracking it? It becomes a lot sometimes. So to have that freedom for one evening or one day, it's really good for you because it gives you that little Agreed. break. You've had that time and then you feel refreshed and ready to get back onto your diet the next day. Yeah. No, so there are benefits to cheap meals. Also, it's in, uh, yeah. And when you start doing it, you start understanding, right? And I think another, I think you may have touched on this. A massive thing for me that I love it when a client learns about their body, excuse me, is they will go out for a meal or a takeaway or go out with friends the next morning, the first thing they're doing is jumping on them scales because they're like, oh, I need to see the damage I've done. <laughs> yeah. Although you're probably not going to be able to see the damage you've done yet. No. And um, the scales have shot up. Mm. Oh, my God. Shouldn't have gone out. I've ruined everything. I mm. weigh heavier than I did <clears throat> three weeks ago. You have that conversation with them. Sodium, salt, high carb intake. You're just holding water. Mm -hmm. Three days later, oh, Mark, I'm back to that. I'm back to my normal weight. <laughs> Absolute result. And oh, I'm really? like, not oh, really. <laughs> but that happens um and i just love to see it. i've got one client who i think i speak about all the time angie she um probably listens to this hi angie hi angie um but she's really really good like if for her we should get her on this show because she's actually like the journey she's had she'd mm. come from fad diets up and down and hers is proper like is education mm. like now she understands it she yeah. understands everything yeah. like she passes this knowledge on now mm. Um, but she's really good with holidays, with meals out. She understands her body now. She understands good. that the weight's going to go up, but mm -hmm. she also understands that, w that the week later, she's going to go back down. Mm -hmm. So she um, understands it very, very well. She, she'll be a good one to to talk to. Um, but yeah, us, that's, the, that's again, a education and yeah, understanding your body. Yeah, I mean, she body. understands it through going through it and yeah. learning about it. Yeah, she? and that's it. Once you've done it and you understand it and you understand your body and how reactive your body is to to certain foods and going out on holidays and all this jazz, normal life, mm. you can then control yourself better. Because also if someone goes out, they wake up, they put on weight, they think, fuck this, I'll give up. Mm. And then what you do, straight off plan, you're not tracking, sack the gym off, go down a pub, and now you're doing some real damage. You mm. hadn't done damage before. The scales just told you you'd done damage when you hadn't actually done any damage. Yeah. Just retain a little bit more water. Mm -hmm. Go for a piss, you'll be all right, mate. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Why are you smiling? I don't like? know. <laughs> <laughs> so happy to be here. So happy, little cripple. Um, so yeah, I think sort of like a recap on everything is obviously we're only saying cheat meals because that's what everyone knows it as, but that's not the best way to describe a cheat meal. 
we like to think of it as a hybrid day where maybe you have a dinner out, mm. but the rest of the day you're still tracking. This is completely okay. There are benefits to it. Like you're having a diet break, you're having a bit of a mental break and you're allowing yourself to have a meal off track, which is absolutely fine. This is a more sustainable way of losing fat and dieting because you're not gonna not go out for dinner for the rest of your life. You're gonna want to do that. Mm. So learning how to combat that now is super, super important if you want to excel yeah. with your you fat loss to, you journey. Have to, you have to live your life 